This is an interview I have recorded with David Poindexter. He is the CEO of envisionative.com and we have spoken about his experience with outsourcing. It was a more of a loose type of conversation, no major topic underneath outsourcing, but his experience about outsourcing, his perspective, tips and tricks of things that he does whenever they need to outsource work. And we have also done something fun, which was a role play. I put ourselves in a situation that, you know, kind of a hard situation and we had to deal with this scenario. So have a look, check it out. This is the interview. Hello, hello, Edris Oliver here. This is another interview of the Ouch Sourcing Podcast. And today I have with me my good friend, David Poindexter from Envision Native. David, thank you very much for being here. Addison, thank you so much. And enjoy always talking with you. Perfect. You are my number one guinea pig. You know, we, we're going to be doing some experiments today. In any case, let me let oh, me, yes. let me uh, just just introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about Envision Native. What do you guys do there? Sure. Um, uh, so I'm the CEO of Invision Native, and we are located in Mooresville, North Carolina, uh, just north of Charlotte, North Carolina area. And uh, we're in Race City, USA. So if you like NASCAR racing, we're right in the heart of it here. So me, I'm not so much a fan, but, you know, you, you kind of have to be a part of it when you're here. So um, we are really a full service creative marketing agency. And um, uh, so we do things like branding and corporate ID, um, advertising campaign kind of stuff. Um, but we also have a strong technical side of the business as well. And um, everything from website development to mobile app development to, um, you know, application development just in general. Um, uh, we, we pretty much any technical thing that needs to be done. We, we like to, um, you know, there to be a, a marketing kind of purpose behind that technical work. So we, we tend to work better that way. We, we always talk about uh, the architect engineer problem that, that happens a lot in the agency world where uh, you, you have outsourcing, you know, you're outsourcing to a tech firm or whatever. And the architect is, the agency wanting it to look pretty and, you know, <laughs> be effective and all that. And then the engineer is sitting there going, yeah, but if you build that, it's going to fall. <laughs> so uh, we, we like to pride ourselves on connecting the dots between those, those two um, different kind of perspectives there. Got it. Okay. So, okay. So usually I, you know, like to make those interviews about one particular area of outsourcing, but today I just decided that we can just have an open you know, open conversation here about outsourcing, about how you outsource, what you outsource, your understanding about outsource as well. So let's start there. If I ask, you know, 10 people out there, what do they understand about outsourcing when we talk about outsourcing? Most likely you're going to have 10 slightly different answers out there. So I want to start with your perspective on outsourcing. What do you understand about, you know, what it is? Outsourcing, you know. Well, what's outsourcing? I've never heard of this phrase before, Addison. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Um, so, so outsourcing uh, to me, I mean, it means several different things. Um, it, I, I guess there's really two main perspectives, though, for us is one, we outsource certain types of projects to a, you know, a provider of that service. Um, and so that, that's very valuable to us because certain skills we won't necessarily have in-house or we have too much bandwidth, you know, or too little bandwidth to fulfill that client need. So we'll, we'll outsource. So there's that, but then there's also, we, we play the role of an outsource provider. So um, another agency may not be able to do mobile app development, for instance. So we can do that very well and we can partner with them and supply that service to their client. Um, and there's all sorts of sub understandings of, of both of those perspectives. But yeah, I mean, just in general, that's what, that's what it is to me. Got it. Got it. So it, it's interesting that you wrangled there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going to repeat what you said in, a, in different, different words. Mm -hmm. The angle that you are bringing to the table is that outsource, we outsource a piece of 
a ma of a bigger project. It might be, you know, us as outsourcing that to somebody else, to another organization, or us being the outsourcing provider for someone else out there that may have split their project into smaller pieces and may give that little, you know, that smaller piece to you as well. Is that is that correct? You understand? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, we operate in both of those worlds. Got it. Got it. I, I, I truly like to think of outsourcing as, as a, as a, on, on a bigger picture in the sense that, and I think that this is, this is very broad, but that's how I think about outsource is whenever, whenever I provide a service to another business, that business is outsourcing, you know, that piece of thing, you know, maybe it's a website, maybe it's support, maybe it's mobile development, but they are saying, hey, I don't want to do that internally. I'm going to ask those guys to do it. So they are outsourcing. It might be, you know, near shoring, like it's in the same city, it's in the same country, or it might be offshoring as well, which, True. you know, we're talking about overseas here in other countries. So I, I personally, and I think that's is a very much uh, a personal opinion here. I like uh, to think about outsourcing a little bit in, in loser terms, but let me stick to your definition there, you know, splitting a project into smaller pieces. When, when we say outsourcing, do you have more a, a positive or negative relationship with that word? <laughs> I think both really, uh, you know, it comes down to the individuals or the companies that you're working with and your experiences. So it, it kind of, kind of comes back to the human experience, right? Um, uh, not so much whether it's outsourcing or not outsourcing or in-house or versus, you know, overseas, whatever, you know, or local versus, but it's really about the people and how we interact uh, as to whether or not that experience really works. Okay. Okay. So, so what is it that you outsource? What, what kinds of types of work is that mobile development? Is that, you know, what is it that you outsource that you have outsourced actually? Yeah, I think it, I think it varies really just based on what skills we have in house and don't have in house. Um, and then also what our availability to fulfill a particular project. So, um, we find ourselves outsourcing whenever we need to scale up for a, a larger project or something. So we're a fairly small, uh, boutique agency. And, um, so when a, when a large client project or multiple projects come at the same time or whatever, sometimes we need to augment our services. Um, so that may be everything from something as simple as, um, web development or, um, uh, a lot of times it's programming, um, because we don't have, uh, um, a ton of developers in house. So, uh, a lot of times we'll augment that, uh, through outsourcing. Got it. Okay. Okay. So that brings me to why do you, and you mentioned that throughout what you know, we have been talking, but you outsource because of cost experience, expertise, timing, or maybe a mix of everything there. Yeah, I think it's a, little, a mix of everything. I mean, so, sometimes we need something very specialized. Um, like, for instance, uh, you know, if, we, if we're doing a, a, a great website um, for a client and they have products, for instance, and we're building out an e-commerce store for them, you know, where they need great product photography, but they don't have it. So I, we don't, I can shoot a picture of of products, but I, you don't want me doing that. You know, it's not going to be the best outcome. So that is a great example where it depends on what the product is as to what particular, um, supplier we would actually go to for that, because, you know, we want the best and for the price point that we need, you know, for the client engagement as well. So, um, sometimes it's just that specialized skill, you know, if it's food, well, you want to go to a food photographer and get that, you know, that, that food shot really well if we're working with a restaurant, for instance. Um, if, if we're working with a, you know, somebody that creates widgets, well, we want to go to product, you know, just a general product photography kind of place instead of a food specialist or, <laughs> I mean, there are photographers out there that just shoot hands. You know, they're, <laughs> you know, and what hands do and stuff. So it's uh, sometimes it's that specialized skill. Got and it. Sometimes it's cost as well, you know, cost and availability. Okay. So 
you said you know it, it your experience is very between one provider and another one you have good experience i guess bad experiences so how do you go about selecting picking you know uh, this provider or, or that one how do you go about selecting them yeah that's a good question i mean uh, the the it really kind of comes down to integrity for us and being able to depend, you know, dependability um, uh, of that provider. I, we we do tend to gravitate more towards working with companies rather than individuals, but that's not always the case. I mean, you know, um, it, it, it really just kind of comes down to the relationship, a working model pricing wise, so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time there's a new engagement. Uh, with so, you know, we're pretty big on setting a model for that particular provider and, you know, they tell us what their pricing model is and if it's something that we can easily implement without their involvement or with very little involvement, that's even better because that way we can just go ahead and seal the deal and engage with them um, and don't have to spend too much time on the sales cycle. So, Got it. It's when you say that you prefer to go the agent route, you know, the company route, because for some Sometimes, reason I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have the tendency of, of, and we have the tendency of going more the freelancing route, uh, route mm. instead of the company route. And I have my reasons for that. Uh, I, I, I sometimes I think that the if when you go to a company, that individual under that company will always have other priorities and other things and you can say the same thing about freelancers you know but uh yeah i again that's just my take you know i i, I like the the single professional type of thing and i see that you go more of the company uh, approach you know well it's it's it, it kind of i think that tendency probably comes with the scalability and the size of projects that we, that we do um an individual can only do what an individual can do whereas a team of people that are all doing the same type of thing can handle larger opportunities or multiple opportunities at a time without us having to re work a different way, you know, and try to manage a bunch of individuals um, working on the same project. So, but I see the value in working with individuals, especially on smaller projects where you can really, well, not necessarily smaller projects, but when there's a piece of the project that can easily be, um, sectioned off and, and handled by an individual. And, uh, but in the end, it, it's really just kind of about the relationship and how, how that works, you know, and how we communicate and, and uh, set expectations for client and meet those expectations. I get it. I, I get it. So as a follow-up to you know, your, because I, I assume at this point you have a bit of a roster of, of different people, different companies that you go for when you are looking for for this expertise or photographers or, you know, hand photographer, which must be a very niche type of uh, a scenario. But my, my question is this, are you geared towards the local uh, outsourcing organization, the local contractor, the local freelancer, or do you also do, you know, things offshore, you know, on other, from other places? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, we, we don't really necessarily try to go for local um, unless the client is local then there's a real benefit to that um, but a lot of our clientele is not local so um, it doesn't really matter in the end we're working in a distributed fashion anyways um, as far as experience with offshore um, I've had mixed experiences I've had some very bad experiences and um, some not as bad. Uh, I, I haven't had any really great experiences yet. <laughs> um, I've had some that were adequate, um, but uh, I, I, I don't think that is really fair though to kind of talk about it in that way because it, it paints a bad light on offshoring. Um, I think it can work. I think that we have just not found the right match for us in, in that regard. And, and it really for us is come back to communication and uh, understanding each other and you know sometimes it's cultural differences or language barriers or or things like that and then we've even tried uh, with 
kind of a middle person that's supposed to understand both, you know, um, very well and try to translate that. But that hasn't worked out really well for us yet either. So, really? But I think it's, yeah, I just think that it's because we haven't had the right, right match yet. Um, uh, in, in our, you know, I, I'll go into the development world, right? You know, that, that's kind of a common um, angle for that because of the cost of doing offshore development is a fraction as far as the rate goes. Um, I think in the end, you may end up spending about the same, um, but um, unless you have a really good match. Um, but, you know, it, in that world, the offshoring companies seem to all be able to do everything, or at least that's their message. And when it comes down to it, we have not experienced that. Um, they have great websites. They have great marketing speak or messaging but when it gets down to it, they're really just beginners in, in a lot of those areas for the one, the experiences we've had. So that that's a little frustrating to be told that you're an expert. And then you find out later they're really not and not even really a good match for the project because we needed that base understanding um, that they just didn't have. So honesty and integrity i you know sometimes i think it's innocent uh but we just haven't had great experience yeah i i find it hard to you know work with an organization when they say that they can do anything under the sun you know they they list that all different kinds of technology that are just disjointed they have nothing to do with one to another and they can do anything under the sun I'm, i want to get back to one point that you made earlier you said you even tried with someone, tried outsourcing offshore with someone that knew local cu culture and their culture as well. And uh, just a few years ago, I, I did that a lot because I used to outsource a lot to Brazil. I'm Brazilian. So I used to outsource a lot to, to them because it's a culture that I can understand. It's a, it's, a, it's a place that I can pick up the phone and I can scream at them. On their language uh not that i'll be doing that i'll be doing that actually i never did that but i just wanted to be confident that i can pick up the phone and talk to someone on the other side with ease you know that would not be struggling with the language so and then what i thought is that hey you know what the reason why so many people fail with outsourcing of offshoring is because they don't have what i called an ambassador an ambassador is someone that knows the local culture and knows their culture as well and can become the bridge between those two cultures, you know. And I'm a firm believer at, at that, you know, that you have to have that type of individual. It might be an individual that is sitting on the outsourcing uh, organization. They may have spent years and years in North America or whatever it is, and they have a good hang of the culture of how things flow and how and how people communicate and they can be that bridge you know but i truly agree with you on that sense that you know you need to have that piece that ambassador that knows both that can facilitate communication that's really it you know yeah absolutely i i, th I think that model can work we just haven't found the right match yet so I believe in it, absolutely. Because I mean, otherwise, you know, especially if you're talking about, you know, real diverse culture uh, kind of perspectives, that, that makes it very difficult, you know, sometimes to, I mean, sometimes the smallest phrase can just not mean anything or it could mean something bad, you know, or so like that. And um, especially if, if the culture is one that the answer is always, yes, we can do that. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we ran into. Um, yes, yes, we can do that. But they didn't really understand what they were saying yes to when it came down to the, to the end. So, um, I yeah, it, 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 I like, I like when somebody says, I can't do that, <laughs> you know, or we could do that, but it'll require this. You know, I, I like that transparency. I don't need to be told yes all the time because that's, it makes me feel like that we're not being honest, you know, yeah. <laughs> but that's a culture thing, right? And, and, and again, 
And at the end of the day, project will be delayed and you just have you no know, frustration from both sides, you know. What's the point? Talking about frustrations, let's talk a little bit more about that. If I, I would like to see if you have any horror stories on top of your head. Of course, not naming, you know, organizations <laughs> or anything. But let's see, I worked with this company called Desk Power. Oh, who's that company? By the way. Any uh, horror stories? Actually, that, that would be an interesting one. But in any case, <laughs> any horror stories aside from uh, Double Charge? Well, that's that's just an internal joke, okay? So I mean, yeah, yeah, people that are watching this will not understand, <laughs> but sorry, this is just an internal joke. In any case, aside from <laughs> Double Charge, uh, being double, double charged by yeah. a provider, I guess let's explain. Desk Paul <laughs> provides some service to, to David, and just about a month ago, we double charged him, and we had a problem. So we came to terms, and we uh, that was addressed. But we had a problem. In any case, yes. <laughs> aside from that, any any horror stories that you like to share with us? Yeah, you know, you know I had one recently, Addison. That was, uh, you know, I I've gone in ebbs and flows with with outsourcing certain areas of work, um, especially more complex projects that require I usually play the role of kind of the architect you know when it comes to the technical side of things and then I you know try to say what what each developer is going to be working on and manage it from that's you know kind of like a tech lead architect type role um, and I was I was speaking with a, a company that I had met met recently um, at a conference and um, we, you know, we had a great conversation uh, um, on the on the on the call, and it felt like a really good match, you know. And 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 ultimately, by the way, it, it is a good match. Um, we had some some misunderstandings, but at, we're we're on the call, and I we ultimately get to the conversation about pricing. And to me, okay, I respect you as a business person, you tell me what your price is, and then uh, we'll figure out if that works for us or if it doesn't. I, I don't negotiate pricing with vendors. Um, and I mean, maybe in a very rare situation where we've got a client that is really needing something and we have agreed to do something at a certain level and we have like kind of shot ourselves in the foot or something. If we have an ongoing relationship with a particular um, so provider, um, I, sometimes I will go back and say, listen, this is the situation. You may not be interested in this. You might be interested in this. We have committed to something that we probably shouldn't have committed to. Are you interested in working with this? Um, and then they can decide, you know, at that point. But aside from that, my mode of operation is not to negotiate pricing. Uh, you, I respect you as a business person and you have your own pricing model. So, so we're on this introductory call, you know, we get into the pricing and um, I, I have a fairly good memory when it comes to numbers and things like that. And that they mentioned what their pricing was. And I was kind of shocked at how good it was, you know? So, so I was like, Oh, okay. I, let me make sure I understood you correctly. Did I hear you say X per hour? And uh, they said, oh, yes, yes. You know, we can do this because this and this and this. I was like, huh. Okay. Well, I mean, this is kind of a no brainer at this point for me. So I'm excited. I'm like, okay, this really helps our business big time because, you know, these people really know what they're doing. They're experts. Um, I, I knew they had been in this particular, you know, uh, uh, technical world for a while, you know, and I was like, well, th this, this could really work out. So, <laughs> so we go out the call and, you know, I'm like dreaming up all these projects, you know, that we could, we could do now because we could, um, you know, really afford to do it. It really made sense from a business standpoint. So, so I come back with the first opportunity and I, I said, you know, before we, you know, engage in this, would you mind just sending me an email to, reiterate the pricing I, I i know what you said and all that but <laughs> if i may if i may stop you for a second yeah. David, is that a, lo a local organization or remote team or offshoring which type offshore of offshore it's, okay. it's offshore yep okay. yep yep and um so so i got the email well the pricing was double what they said on the call and i said 
okay, it's, did I misunderstand because I heard this? I even asked you again, is that really what it is? And I was, I was surprised pleasantly at the pricing and you, you agree, but now, now you're saying it's almost double. One dollar short of double, so uh, I was like, "Okay, I, did I misunderstand?" Well, then we got into, I guess, a cultural kind of difference, whatever. They wouldn't answer that I had misunderstood. I guess they didn't want to offend me, you know, because I, I was literally wanting to know if I misunderstood. Because if I misunderstood, then no problem. I mean, it really wasn't that bad of pricing, so it was more of where did I miss this? Because this is not like just a few dollars off. It was double. So, uh, so, uh, we went back and forth and, 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 and long story short, I think they felt like I was negotiating with them, but I was like, but you, you told me, you know, not once, but three times on the call, a different rate than what you're telling me now. So that started the, from my perspective, it started the relationship off wrong because I, and it, I, I didn't misunderstand I, I heard exactly what I heard, and they changed their mind because they saw opportunity. <laughs> God, so, so let me ask you this. What they should have done to keep their higher price, but to make good amendments with you? What would you expect if it was a mistake or whatever it is, but what you would have expected to make amendments there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good question. It's kind of a loaded question. It's it's it's, it's one of those that it really kind of depends on how they how they operate. I mean, first of all, they should not have stated the rate to start with that was wrong. Um, if they do say that it, you know, it, you could say, "I'm sorry, I misspoke." Own it. Own I, it. You know, yeah, exactly. I I I did tell you that rate, and I was thinking about. X, you know, when I did that, and it really, we didn't understand what you needed. And, you know, they could have positioned that, something like that, and it would have been fine because that would have been owning the situation. But just outright saying it was double, you know, it, it, it put a bad taste in my mouth and, and it put us into a situation where, and this was, this was not either one of us has followed, but it kind of felt like it was being negotiated. I said, I'm not trying to negotiate your way. Cause they came back and they said, well, the lowest we can do is this, you know? And I'm like, but I'm not asking you to change your, your pricing. I'm, I'm asking for clarification, you know, what was stated versus what, you know, what, what you're t saying now. So that, you know, it, it ends up, it's, it's turning out well, but it started off wrong. I get it. And anything else on that, on that bad experience? Nah, that, you know, so that was a pretty simple one, but it is, it, it can happen. So, you know, if, if you are providing a service for somebody or if you're, you know, asking for someone, you know, be, don't, don't commit to something before you've thought it through, you know, and uh, if, if they want to offer different pricing or anything like that for different situations, that's fine. That's their prerogative. Uh, we don't do that. We treat everybody pretty much the same and that's just kind of our, our model. But if you want to do that, at least, you know, you don't have to commit to anything until you're ready to commit Got to it. something. So patience is, is important in business to, you know, listen and then evaluate and then, you know, decide what you're going to commit to. And then if you do commit to it, stick to it. Integrity is very important. Got it. Even if you have to take a, a cut there, but uh, I guess that yes. in the long run, you're going to be, you know, you're going to reap the benefits of, of building a strong relationship. Yeah, if I messed up like that and I realized that I really misspoke, I'd say, you know what, the, the first project, I'm going to honor that. And I have just, I, I've come to a realization that we can't do that in mass, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that for the first project and honor that. Got it. Okay, so I have an experiment to do here. here here's what I'd like to try. And I don't know if this will work, but, uh, but let's see. I'd like to do a bit of a role playing here. And you are your own organization, or you're David from uh, Envision Native, but I'm a provider of mobile development services to, to yourself. You know? And then there's this client 
that you, you, you close the project and there is a mobile development part of that, of that bigger project. And you say, hey, Anderson, take that piece. Do you want to do it? I'll accept. But now, now the project is late. The mobile development has not been delivered. And now you have to give me a call and understand what's going on. So I would like you to play that role and I'll play the provider role and see how we, and, and go for real, you know, go try to be as real as possible. I'm going to try to be as real as I would do, as I would be on my own organization. I'm not going to be a uh, slippery slope. I'm just going to try to be myself as I put myself in, in the shoes of that person in that situation. So give me that call. Okay, so for clarification, we have failed in delivering what what you need. Yeah, no, actually, no, actually, the time. you you mm -hmm. are you have outsourced a project, a mobile development to us. So we gotcha. are providing you a mobile gotcha. development service that you subcontracted for a major project that you have with a client. Gotcha. Okay. Got it? So, so you're gonna be calling me and say, "Hey, what's up, man?" Ring, ring. Hello, Anderson Oliver here. Hey, Anderson, um, this is David over at Initiative. Um, you know, uh, I, I wanted to do a touch point here on this project that we have going on for, for Client X. Um, I, I may have misunderstood what we agreed to, but do you remember the project plan that we developed together? and that we signed off on and you signed off on and then i delivered that to the cloud do you remember us doing that i mean it was it was a few weeks ago but um yeah, okay. do you remember that so, yeah let's just look here through my emails yes i i see it okay okay so i see something here so was it to be ready a week ago is that is that correct yeah uh, i mean d um I want to make sure we're looking at the right document. Uh, are you looking at the Gantt chart that we put together for that for that product correct, uh, the correct. timeline and, there? Do you see the dates on it? Yeah, and I I gave that to my lead developer, and he was supposed to be following that. So so you're telling me that uh, he didn't deliver yet that uh, that mobile we, that mobile app. You know, so we do have a daily stand up meeting uh, uh, with him, but. Last Friday was supposed to be the day, and we did not have a meeting on Friday morning because that was the date of delivery. And we have not heard from him, and we've sent several emails since then. We're now on Tuesday, and I, our client is a little frustrated. So we're, we're, we're trying to backpedal here and understand what's going on and if we need to reset expectations or not. Got it. Okay, so, so David, here's what has happened. So John has been sick for, for the past few days. So I wasn't aware of, of that deadline. I wasn't fully, it wasn't top of mind. So he went away for two days already. I, we haven't heard you know, much from him aside that he's trying to recover himself. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give him a call and find out where things are. See if anybody else in the team may have an update on that, but but yeah, I'm going to get on top of that, get back to you as quickly as possible and hopefully give me give me two or three days to get things back on track, please. Well, listen, we, we're, we're sorry to hear that he's dealing with some sickness and so forth. He's been doing a great job. Um, it, it's just that we committed this and now this looks bad on us. So I know you have to do what you have to do. I don't know if this can be transitioned, if we can kind of make up for the time. But I think he was really close to getting across the finish line. Um, so I tell you what, why don't you do that? Um, is there a way that you can get back to me like with just a general idea like today so that I could actually get over to, you know, uh, kind of remessage things with the client and set, reset expectations. We're going to do an all hands on deck in the next 10 minutes. And then we're going to see um, the other team members. We're going to sort things out. And yes, I'm going to get back to you within the next half an hour or so with an update. And hopefully we can get through the cross through the final line within, you know, within a day or so. I mean, I, I think that that would be reasonable to get the other team members up to speed. So I hope that, again, I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I mean, again, full full ownership here. It's really on us. Nothing wrong with, you know, what's going on in terms of communication. We knew what needed to be done. 
we filmed there. And uh, again, I'm not trying to give an excuse here, but yeah, I'm just owning things up here and hey, let's 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 make this right and uh, let's let's cross the finish line here. Well, let's do this. Since we have disappointed a little bit on the client side of things at this point, before I go back with a clear reset of expectations, let's make sure that whatever you commit to at this point that we're really going to be able to do. I don't really want to be in a situation to have to kind of buffer the, you know, things and everything that kind of pull the wool over the client's eyes. I'd rather be direct and, and tell them exactly what's going on. Um, I'm sure they'll understand a sickness situation. I think they would say to me, though, that we should have alerted them to that when it, when we first knew so that they would not be expecting to to, to receive it. And, and again, our fault here. I should have mentioned to you up front when I, as soon as I, as I knew that uh, John would be sick, was sick, I mean, as soon as he communicated that, so I, I should have communicated that, but, but yeah, that, I, that I had, happened. so. Yeah, yeah, that, not a problem. Listen, Ash, I appreciate your time and everything. We're going to, we're going to wait to hear back from you and I, I appreciate you handling it the way you're handling it. We, we really respect the relationship. Perfect. Thank you very much, David. And you're going to hear from me within an hour or so. Bye. Excellent. Th thank you, Anderson. So how was it? <laughs> Should I, should I have been a, a nasty type of provider that, hey, you cannot wait just one more day? How come? I mean, or did I, did I do right by you? Actually, Anderson, that's why we love working with you, because you recognize what happens, you own up, and you, you, you put a solution in place. You're, you're not going to say, well, you didn't do this or you didn't do that, which may have been true. Maybe we messed up. Maybe we did that, but you actually made me feel as a, as the client of yours that you valued it and that you wanted to rectify the situation that, okay, yeah, we had a problem. Let's fix it. Perfect. And, and next, next role play that I'll be doing with, with the next interviewee, I'll be, I'll be a bit more, I'll be, you know, nastier. I'll be the provider that wants to give excuse mm -hmm. for everything, you know? <laughs> So not not being a nice guy. Do you have that in you? I do have. I can be bad. I'm bad. Like my daughter says, I'm bad. I'm bad. You know. And, uh, <laughs> that's about it, man. Uh, I think that we are coming to an end here. We are close to 40 minutes. Really like the role playing. It was really an experiment. Um, yeah. Let's let's see how that will play out with someone that I don't know as much as I know yourself. But uh, <laughs> but let's see. Uh, any any. Anything else that you'd like to mention about outsourcing? Actually, let me ask you this. When it comes to outsourcing, what is the one thing that you'd say to uh, someone that is looking to get some work outsourced to a third party? What, is, what, what would be one thing that you'd recommend to them before they get started? Yeah, I think uh, having a clear definition of who you are, what you provide, and what is your model for working. Um, you know, what is your engagement process? And once you get engaged, how do you communicate and stuff like that? So if you can really define, I know I just threw out a lot there, but, uh, you know, if you can really define that and know who you are and how you prefer to work, you can always use that as a starting point, um, you know, to, to, to meet the needs of whoever you're providing to. But if, if, if a provider can provide that stuff to me up front, it puts me at ease because I know we have a model in place and I don't, we don't have to have these awkward conversations of how we're going to work on every single project. Um, we can know what to expect. Got it. Got it. And actually, let me, let me ask one more before I let you go. What would you not outsource at all? Hmm. You stopped me. It hmm. might be, um, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you some, some, some. I, I, guess. I know one. I would not. I would not outsource my accounting. Okay. Okay. Well, and what I mean by that, my bookkeep, my daily bookkeeping. Really. <laughs> I figured that when we get you, because I think we talked about. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, interesting. that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Because it's I, my I, books, you know. So, so yeah. I mean, now I, I would have somebody here. My point is, is I. I would I would do that in house. I would hire it. internally Got for it. that because it's so involved and the communication needs to be so tight there Perfect. on what we're doing. So yeah, very good, very good. So last but not least, uh, 
tell your tell us uh, where people can find you and uh, if they want more information about your services your 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 agency yeah so um you can find us on the web at envisionative.com and that's spelled like this and um you can also go to mobileapplify.com which is a a brand of ours that we do mobile app development um for it but it's same company and um you can reach me on twitter at david poindexter and uh all the rest of the communication information is on the websites. Perfect. David, thank you very much. Thank for taking a shot on the role playing that we, we did. And uh, really <laughs> appreciate fun. your help, man. Yeah, thank you, Harrison. Cheers. Bye.